Umali. Okay, thank you very much uh, for inviting me uh, for the talk. It's really a great honor to have the chance to share uh, my project with, with you. And uh, today I will mainly talk about the Crumb Tree Creek project, which I have, uh, I have uh, initiate, initiated in 2010 until 2012. Uh, the project was uh, in collaboration with Ben Bukovin Studio, uh, Margaret Shu, and actually the, the Ben Bukovin Studio uh, um, continued to uh, run the project even um, after 2012. So actually the project is still quite active uh, nowadays in the community. And I would just like to um, explain a little bit about how we began and what we were doing at this project. And first of all, this project is about two inquiries. And the, the main subject is about art and public life. But, and we, uh, things I myself and Bamboo Curtain Studio, uh, uh, we, uh, Actually, we, we live uh, in, um, in, in this area, so which is uh, a little bit outside Taipei City and the place called uh, Zhu Wei. It's part of the township of uh, Damshui area. And this particular place has been greatly expanded uh, uh, 20 years ago. So it means uh, this place it, in, in the 50s, maybe only less than one, uh, 10,000 people live here. But nowadays, it's, it's about um, 40,000 people here. So, um, so you can imagine that the place that uh, has been expanded greatly, especially because the land or the urban space has been capitalized. And so, um, so we as art practitioners, we will ask ourselves, how, what could we do uh, to uh, this kind of situation? And the other is, I was also very much inspired by uh, Bruno Latour's text. Actually, uh, he wrote also for uh, Taipei Biennial 2018 when I co-curated and he was asking uh, how could we uh, rediscover an old land and to find the new chance for it or the new uh, universality. And he also quote, has quoted uh, Anna Chin uh, and an anthropologist uh, who has uh, written a very famous book uh, called uh, Mushroom at the End of the, uh, um, the uh, Capitalist Ruins, you know, something like that. And, and I, I think it's a kind of co um, coincide with each other that the place I am going to talk about, it's really, a uh, uh, capitalist ruin somehow as a, from my point of view. And, and our task is very much about how can we rediscover this old land. And here I am showing the map of, of the site. So uh, on the right hand side, you see uh, the map of Taiwan. And so maybe you can see that um, Japan is nearby on the top, on the top, and also uh, Philippines is downside. And on the left hand side is the Great China. And our project's actually located in on the north side of Taipei. So uh, here in the image, you can see that where the river is, it's the um, the Damshui River. And then you can see that uh, there's a, 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 a creek. Uh, um, it, it's, it's, it's the place where I'm going to talk about. Okay, so this is the city I just mentioned. Uh, sorry, in the 50s, it's less than just 
thousand one thousand people <laughs> who live who was live here. But nowadays, you can see how the city has been expanded. So here you can see that there is a, a building with the uh, yellow roof. It's the MRT station, MRT Zhuwei. And because of the MRT station, and also because there's a big hospital, and that's why um, in last 20 years, there were many people who moved to here because of the uh, uh, very convenient uh, traffic and also for our, uh, very convenient for our daily life. They are elementary school here and also middle school and also universities. And on by the by the MRT station there, you can see where the water comes to the river. It's the creek I I I will talk about. So uh, so you can see how crowded the whole area is. And again, here is an image uh, where the sign is. That is where the Bamboo Curtain Studio is. So uh, the Bamboo Curtain Studio locates uh, just by the Jamsui River. And um, you can see that actually the whole area is still, uh, um, yeah, most, most of the, the, the area is still green because it's a little bit on the hillside and uh, agriculture is still quite active here. And so when we begin to, uh, to, to think of uh, the, the, the Plum Tree Creek, it was actually um, mentioned by a um, local uh, he, uh, historian. Um, he told us actually that the creek was a major a uh, major, uh, how to say that, it's the creek uh, provide, provided water to the daily lives of the people who live here. But for us, uh, it, nowadays, you can hardly imagine that because um, now the water is quite polluted. And so when we started to ask why the water or the creek become how it looked like nowadays. So we started to, to think of there are some key elements, for example, uh, because of the urban development and also because of the, the, our daily life nowadays, it's very different from the, in the old days. So we were trying to understand what had happened in last, let's say, 20 or 30 years. So we started to, uh, to, to make research on water issue, why the water was polluted. And then we found that there's still pig farming in the area. And, and then we also uh, tried to understand what happened to the land. And certainly, as you saw that, in the last 20 years, there are a lot of houses was built in this area. And so it means that the whole area, uh, agriculture area became smaller and smaller. And so we would ask, how, how does the people, uh, how do the people make their living nowadays uh, if they are not, uh, make their living from the agriculture and what is about nowadays. So there's again, a question about how people, um, 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 yeah, well, how, how, how they make a life and what is the whole uh, labor or productions condition. And so we can understand um, the development or the changes of the whole area. And so with a lot of um, questions, we, we, we were thinking uh, maybe we, can we could use this opportunity to build a kind of learning communities. And, 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 and for this learning process, certainly we need to have people uh, from different disciplines uh, to help us to understand what had happened to the land. 
And so here are images, the uh, a collage of the image of Creek. You can see that in each uh, each part, it's it has a different phase. So from the the downstream to upstream, the creek lo looks totally different because in the downstream there were a lot of uh, buildings. I mean, a lot of people live there. It's really a, a, a city. But in upper stream, only few people live there and, and there are many farmers. So you can still have a feeling or you can see that the creek is still in the original condition. It means it, there were a lot of stones uh, on the riverbank, etc. But while in the downstream, you can hardly see the creek because it's mainly covered. And here I show the art histo the, the, the historian who showed us a, an old photo. And uh, here you can see that actually let's say maybe 50 years ago, most of the land here are agriculture area. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's only for agriculture, but nowadays it's all buildings in surrounding. But in the, in the 60s, uh, late 60s and, um, and uh, 70s, early 70s, there are small factories also here uh, in this area. So, um, but nowadays, um, all these factories are gone. And instead of, instead of factories, they are now all uh, buildings. Uh, and that's why the, uh, the residents uh, become, uh, I mean, they have become, uh, become a huge population. Um, here in this particular area. And again, here from this collage, you can see how the creek look like. Uh, um, um, on the bottom, you see uh, uh, the situation of the creek. It's really a covered, and, and then the, the water will flow into the Dempsey River. But, but on the top, you can see how the creek looked like, you know, a lot of stones um, on, on, uh, in, uh, on the river bank, and you cannot really see uh, where is the boundary be between land and the water. It's, it, it's, it's kind of vague. And this is uh, how it looks like, you know, in the upper stream. So you can see that, um, that um, even in the middle, in the middle, you can see that the creek has been, um, uh, how to say that, cemented uh, somehow, uh, especially the, the bank of the creek been cemented. And then you can see that the creek been covered. So this, this, this is the situation nowadays. And that's why I call it uh, as a kind of capitalist ruin because a, a, a natural creek and have different phases uh, through the history. And again, you can see uh, how the village look like nowadays. Uh, on the left-hand side, on the top, it's the, the village uh, in the upper stream. And this village, I mean, the, the people who came here 300 years ago. And now you can see even they were uh, um, a building became empty, but this this red brick building was for the pig farm in, in the early days, but now they don't farm uh, any, anymore. And that's why it became broken. But uh, the other places you still can see that uh, although people are still living there, but uh, their houses became uh, very different uh, and very modernized um, nowadays. And on the, on the right hand side, you can see the city center. It's very crowded and the, main, the, major, the major road, uh, it's actually not wide enough for the cars. So you can see that actually there's no really urban planning here. So people just 
build uh, if they get the land and they just build the houses and so that you can see uh, uh, the water, I mean, the, our um, Swiss water came to the river directly, but now it has been improved. But uh, this image I met maybe 10 years ago. So nowadays it looks different, which is a good part. But uh, still you can see that um, in on the hillside, um, there are a lot of, uh, uh, we call it so-called uh, civil gardens. So it's it's uh, it's, it's a small gardens um, run by people, uh, especially for the retired people. They would uh, rent a small land and just uh, try to have some vegetables or fruits for themselves. So you can see that a lot of people who live in surrounding they they would. Uh, come here and, and to have their small garden. And so this kind of mixture, I mean, um, uh, on the one hand, you still can feel how the village looked like 300 years ago. And, and also nowadays, how people live in this modern life and also in the high, this uh, high rise uh, skyscraper. And, 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 at the same, and at the same time, uh, people really enjoy in uh, uh, planting or, or uh, do a little bit uh, gardening for themselves. So this mixture let, let, let us think, how could we rediscover or reimagine or reinventing the place? Because it seems not very well, um, organized, but at the same time, uh, you, you, you can see that there are a lot of layers here. It's like uh, um, the, um, you, can, you can find things like from 300 year ago, years ago, but at the same time, uh, you can see how people live nowadays there. So, um, so I, when I had the idea, so I I, um, I discussed with Bamboo Curtain Studio, Margaret Su Tang, and also uh, with some experts, and how how could we um, how how could we do? And and so we initiated some uh, events uh, with the officer and also with some experts to understand um, the 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 changes are the the um, yeah I mean what can we do uh, uh, to to the praise and so we 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 started to think maybe we can um, uh, organize a kind of environmental uh, art project and use the project as a kind of base for for the residents and also for the artists to, um, to explore the, the place. And so we have three key uh, initiations. One is organized by myself, uh, which is breakfast at the Plum Tree Creek. And the second one is organized by uh, the director of um, Bamboo Curtain Studio, uh, Margaret Xu Tian. And, and then the third one, Mobile Museum, it's organized, was organized by an urban planner, Huang Reima, Professor Huang Reima. So here you can see some images of, uh, for example, for the breakfast at the Plum Tree Creek, uh, I initiate a kind of one year project. So uh, we, we meet um, once a month uh, in different places along the river, along the creek. And because there are a lot of garden in, uh, in surrounding, and that's why uh, I was thinking maybe it's a good beginning to, uh, to work with the residents there. And so we, um, we purchased the vegetables from the garden and to cook the vegetables from the, from the months. So through this kind of event, on the one hand, uh, we get in touch with the, the local residents and also 
through our breakfast together, we could understand what they think about the creek and also discuss discussing about the problem we were facing. And at the same time, we also learn how to uh, make uh, make our meals. And it, it was very interesting, although, although uh, the farming area is just behind this, I mean, just behind the building, it's not far from the uh, where the people live, but most of the people, because they moved to here maybe in the last 10 or 15 years, they don't really know about the place. They don't even take a walk uh, behind uh, in the on, on the backside of the city. And that's why through this event, um, many people uh, who uh, join who joined us, they were surprised that uh, the food they got actually is from, you know, like maybe just uh, just one miles away where they live. And and also uh, during this uh, each uh, breakfast event, we also organize certain issue for discussion. For example, this was the very first very first breakfast meeting. And at the time uh, we have a lot of carrots. And, and we, we also uh, invited the, the, the local historian to uh, share with us about the development of, of the, this particular place. So this, this helped us uh, to understand what had happened to this land. And also, for example, this is the, the in, in March, and we we make cake out of a certain a certain uh, plants, um, and we went to the upper stream and get in touch with the people who live in upper stream, and we realized that they also really care about the water because they found the water was very much polluted uh, by the pig farms. So that, that's how we began to discuss whether we could uh, build a kind of uh, uh, alliance, uh, so-called river God, gardens alliance and to continue to, to uh, take care of the issues around the creek. And here from this map, you can see we, we, we were really everywhere during one year. And through this action, we also learned what we uh, could harvest from the land. So all these all this vegetables, our fruits is from here. And we were really surprised that, um, that uh, uh, even in this small land, we can already uh, uh, support ourselves. I mean, from 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 the land, we we can have our our food, and um, this this make us really to rethink. Although we are nowadays uh, have a, a kind of uh, urban life, we usually we get our food from supermarket, etc. But actually, if we want to change our ha habit habits and maybe we can really have the food just from the ground nearby. And so there were a lot of discussion about uh, this kind of uh, issues. And also during the monthly event, uh, we also uh, sometimes have the, uh, the meeting with different kind of environmental uh, uh, groups they come to share with us what they were doing and how we could improve our, our life uh, in a more ecological way, etc. And also we try to uh, really to, uh, to, to check the water situation. When the water gets worse, then you know, someone might call the, 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 the government uh, and, and try to recheck what happened to, to, to the creek, et cetera. So um, the breakfast meeting was uh, very important uh, for, the, for this project because it's really 
uh, a medium for us to get in touch with the people who live here and also get to know people who have certain knowledge about uh, ecology and also to get to know people from different kinds of school, like um, elementary school, teachers from elementary school or middle school. And also there are a lot of uh, residents who were actually the students of the Taipei Art University or Tamkang uh, University. So we try to engage these people together to, to, um, to, to, um, to the project. And so we can see the second key uh, initiation, which is by the Margaret Xu. And she, she initiates School of the Future. And actually, she, um, as a director of Bamboo Curtain Studio, they usually have the artist in residency. And she, she would um, invite most of those um, resident, residence artists to work with the school and work, work with the teachers or with, um, with, with the kids together to explore. Uh, the creek. For example, here we can see that there were teachers from the from the middle school, and and she she tried to engage her her students and um, and participating in this environmental survey, and then um, they would do paintings, drawings, or even the public art. And this is the, just the temporary public art, et cetera. And so I think th those projects were very important because we, we were trying to, uh, to change uh, the, the, how to say, the, the, I mean, the teaching in, in school, because usually in the school, the teacher would, um, or uh, teach something really from the book, but not really from our daily life. And we 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 were we were engaging those teachers and trying to help them to develop their curriculum into <clears throat> into their classroom and so into their class, so that uh, they also got more and more ideas how to develop their um, teaching skill and also the their cur curriculum and through this uh, bamboo curtain uh, through bamboo curtain studio not only that the artists were really uh, in the residency of of the schools but also that the, the teachers, uh, they were trying to develop new curriculum and they got also a lot of grants from the educational department to, uh, yeah, to, to, to change in, uh, their classes, et cetera, and which is really a very positive part of the project. Uh, and very positive result of the project. And the, the third one uh, is, uh, shaping of a village. And this project is run by Professor Huang Rei Mao, who himself is an urban planner. And so he, um, he worked with uh, his students from the university and they were trying to, um, to, to make the research about the whole area and to understand uh, how uh, uh, the different layers, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, and different layers of the earth and also the lives here. So they found um, they found out that uh, that uh, in these small places and there are a lot of things uh, mixed together. Like I just mentioned, there are still people. It, uh, especially the elder, elderly, they are still uh, living in uh, old style, like they, they, they are still uh, doing the gardening and uh, they still have a very, um, very uh, simple life. 
And while the other, I mean, the younger generation, they would rather to have this urban life, etc. So they they were trying to uh, to make these different layers very clear. And then um, uh, with all the material they collected and also the people they found um, in the village that were very interesting. So they asked them together come to the, the plaza and to share their daily knowledges or, or uh, share um, with the people how to how to, uh, to how to have a life without money, etc. And it's really very interesting because um, uh, because our our life has changed a lot. But um, for the younger generation, it seems there's no way out that we can live only uh, in the in this capitalist system. But through different lifestyle here in this particular area, it seems that we can uh, find a new way of life for, for this particular community. So through the mobile museum, they were, they, they were um, trying to uh, have different dialogues with people from different part of this particular community and trying to see uh, what could we do for the next? So, um, and through these two years, there were a lot of uh, things happened, and we were uh, we were really uh, very honored that um, that the project got a lot of attention, and 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 finally we got also an award. And here you can you you can see the our final presentation and expression at the um, Taipei, uh, Taipei Contemporary Art Museum. And actually uh, what we shown in here is only the docu doc documents of the whole process. But even, even after that, I mean, we are still trying to see what's the impact of the whole project project and also the significant significance of the projects so i think um, the the reason why the project seems very inspiring to to a lot of people here in taiwan is because this project developed really with the community and also it's really a down to earth project Although the uh, cultural identity issue is always the major issue in, in the culture scene here in Taiwan, but uh, this project uh, began to talk about the environmental issue. And that's why uh, um, uh, th this project also uh, inspired a lot of artists and trying to uh, uh, de uh, develop their own initiation, their art uh, project as well, and uh, and with the environmental issue, and and for the creek itself, and um, it's also very important that um, the not only the private sector but also the public sector pay now more attention to uh, to the creek. And nowadays, if there's any changes, for example, recently that uh, because of the heavy rain in upper stream, the residents there, they would like to, um, to, uh, to, to, how to say that, they hope that the, the government would do something to the creek. And so um, uh, they, uh, then the government, I mean, the public sector will, will uh, well, let us know that people are uh, uh, noticing that they, there are some damage or there are some uh, problems around, around the creek and how could we do together. And I think this is also one of the positive impact of the project so that uh, whenever uh, the public sector want to do anything there, they would let us know and so that we can also participate in, in the whole conversation with the people. And the, and, and the other uh, 
impact for the community is also, um, as I just mentioned, that most of the people who live there nowadays, maybe they just moved to here maybe in the last 10 or 15 years, they don't really know about the place. So uh, for them, this is only the place like everywhere. But now because of the project, they started to know each other and then they also try to initiate certain environmental um, events. So people uh, get to know each other and then they would say that uh, this, uh, this, this, this community become kind of home in a way because we share the same knowledge and share the same value for the environment. And this project also has positive, very positive impact to the uh, Bamboo Curtain Studio. Um, um, I think since uh, uh, 2012, Bamboo Curtain Studio began to uh, identify itself as a and uh, an artist in residency, especially for environmental issue. And also Bamboo Curtain Studio became a base also uh, for, for, for the community, I mean, for the, re the residential community. So that whenever they wanted to discuss anything about the environmental issue, they will contact Bamboo Curtain Studio. And so I think this, all these developments um, let us uh, see that uh, through the project, the artist became somehow important uh, in, in this small community. And, and I would say if you are interested um, and, and would like to know more about the Bamboo Curtain Studio or more know about the Crumb Tree Creek area, there's a very good website actually run by the, the elementary school. So there was a teacher, Mr. Chen Jianxing, who has participated in our project. And since then, he has initiated uh, a research project with, the, with, with his students, and they were trying to um, to make the research of the whole area. They collected all the old photos and uh, interviewed uh, elderlies and also uh, checking the water quality, et cetera. So, uh, uh, so that they uh, make that into that web page. And also the other expert, insect expert, we also got to know him through our activities. It's Mr. Lin Bo Chang, who lives actually in also in this area. And we found out that he is actually an insect expert. So since then, he began to work with us and try to um, initiate a kind of uh, insect observation uh, monthly. So if you are interested, you can check the website of the Plum Tree Creek, and then you can find there were a lot of um, information about the insects in this surrounding. Like, uh, like this uh, image, you see that um, in September in the World Rivers Day, we initiate also some um, activities. And these this events were organized by Mr. Lin and he was trying to, uh, to uh, teach people how to, how to observe the, in, the insects and also make the record, etc. So I think it's uh, through all these years, we found out that these people, they all they have they all have their own uh, knowledges and backgrounds, and we come together become be, become a kind of uh, guardian alliances, and we um, we meet us uh, we meet once a while together, and to share about what happened in the community and what happened uh, in the creek, etc. And so. Um, so uh, I would say that especially when I uh, when I co-curate the post nature uh, biennial Taipei biennial, 
I found out uh, um, uh, the the nature. Uh, I mean, through the this exhibition, we were trying to redefine what nature means. So, as you can see, that uh, through uh, the the long um, period of time when we uh, developed uh, that uh, project, we found out that uh, actually uh, we we now really. Uh, rediscover our place and also we would like to uh, really re reimagine the place where we live. And uh, here are some images of the project at the, the Taipei Biennial. Actually, uh, you can check on the Taipei Biennial uh, 2018 website. There are a lot of detailed information. And here I would like to uh, mention just one or two projects uh, in the biennial. For example, this one, Museum of Non-Humanity. It's by uh, uh, artist from Finland, uh, Gustafsson and um, Hapoja. Um, they try to, um, to, they initiate a, a project called Museum of Non-Humanity. It means, uh, they were criticizing that the museum uh, mostly um, built with uh, a, a, a colonial idea, and uh, and uh, if if we um, change our our way of looking or change the way of our uh, uh, collecting our. Uh, uh, displaying the object, and then the museum might look very differently. So uh, this was their proposal, and in this proposal, actually, uh, they they uh, presented a lot of images from the museum and see how animals, or insects, or other species uh, were presented in the museum but also the texts written by philosopher or writers, you know, um, from, from there you can see um, uh, how we were so much uh, uh, human-centered. Uh, we see the world from the, our human-centered perspective. And I, I think this was a really a very um, important critique uh, cre critique for nowadays. And the other project, for example, here you can see it's by the uh, indigenous group of people here in, from Taiwan. And I invited them because they were, they were protesting uh, uh, um, uh, because of the land use uh, regulations. And uh, they were asking to have uh, their lands back, I mean, from the Aborigines, because the new reg land regulation has uh, destroyed their own uh, culture. And so they use the museum space also as a classroom. So every Saturday, they also organize a kind of talk, our forum, and to dis discuss about their situations with the with the, vis the museum's visitors and try to bring changes to 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 what happened uh, in their lives. And also here, the last one is, you can see that it's by the very famous environmental artist. It's Helen Meyer Harrison and Newton Harrison. And this project actually was invited by uh, an artist group from Scotland. So they were trying to make a research in Scotland. And, and here you can see the images. Um, one one uh, image show one element of the of the the, the 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 deep wells of the nation. For example, one picture is about water. One is about the forest, and and maybe one is about the the fresh air, and the other maybe about the uh, the the spaces, the multiple spaces of the land, etc. So they were trying to. Um, uh, promote a, a new idea of the land use uh, 
uh, uh, regulations and and through this through this uh, very carefully uh, 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 research we can rediscover or re-understand uh, our land and trying to find a new way uh, of the of land use and this is why I quote uh, from the Bruno Latour uh, and also from uh, and. Anna Ching about um, yeah um, how to how to survive in, at the end of this uh, uh, capitalist ruins. Okay, so that's it. That's it. That's about my sharing. Uh, I'm very sorry for not so fluent. <laughs> couldn't speak so fluent at this moment, but I hope that you uh, understand what I was talking about. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, thank you, Umali. I think it's um, very clear indeed, and you've covered uh, a very uh, huge area, really, um, through, first of all, your project, but also your introduction to the Taipei Biennial. And it's very interesting to see the relationship between these two projects, one that is obviously very local, literally in the area where you live, um, and then, of course, a very global platform. Uh, and that's certainly one of my questions. Uh, we have some questions in the Q&A, so I, I will, um, I'll start with those. Uh, I'll start with a simple question, because you mentioned, of course, in the area around Plum Tree Creek, uh, there were, um, it, there was farming, there were also industry, the factories. And so one of the first questions we have here is why the industry is closed. Um, I think that that story is also very interesting. Maybe you could say a little bit about um, this sort of change in the industrial landscape just around that creek? Yeah, I think um, this small place really uh, symbolized the whole economic development in Taiwan, because in the early days, I mean, before the 60s, um, people live mainly from the agriculture, but, um, but, but then um, they were, uh, after Second World War, uh, Taiwan got a lot of uh, economic support from America. So the, the textile industry began to bloom in, in Taiwan and also particularly in Northern Taipei, but not in this particular area. So in this particular area, because as I just mentioned, we don't have the tap water until maybe 20 years ago. That's why maybe, um, uh, before that, there were not so many people who lived there. So there were only one ceramic uh, factory. And later on, there's a kind of early uh, electronic factory. But those factories were quite small. Maybe they have only about 100 workers for, for them. But mm. now they were all Gone. So, for example, that factory, electronic factory, uh, now became a high cracker, and there are two thousand people live there. So, so you can see um, how it changed, and 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 because I think in Zhuwei, this particular area, because it's on the the hillside, so there are not not up lands for bigger factories. So only small factories were here. And then they were all moved out either later on. I mean, for example, that electronic factory, as I as much as I know, they were make toys. Mm. And I think from the 70s, all those uh, toys factory went to China. And that's why they, they close they close down. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple of more questions, but um, from memory, there's also a golf course in the area. Is that right? For me? Uh, uh, from memory, there is also a golf course. Or, um, oh, yes, on the top, on the top. Yes, I think the golf place began in the late 50s. Mm. So there were a lot of arguments between the residents and the, the golf club because of the water issue. So water is really a, a major issue here. Yeah. And also for the golf because they use a lot of chemical things 
for for the for make a beautiful <laughs> lawn, <laughs> and so there were always this kind of uh, arguments there. Yeah, mm. no, the fascinating microcosm when you were talking again about land use, and of course now you know tying to um, indigenous sort of rights around land use that have been very. Um, you know, implicated in environmental issues, also around nuclear waste in Taiwan. Um, I'll, I'll just read another question here that's been um, voted up. So I'll start with this one. And, and it says, I'm, I'm interested in the intersections between artists and practitioners in the social and environmental sciences in your project, and you introduced mm -hmm. quite a few. Was that an easy process? Was there a natural division of roles? Uh, did the concept of the museum help to envision a productive alliance between these different disciplines? Um, uh, first of all, I would like to say I really uh, 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 used art, art, art practitioner purposely because it's not only artists, but also art administrators. Uh, and um, and also uh, um, art historian. I mean, not only artists are participating in the project, and also there are a lot of uh, uh, in, uh, environmental activists participating mm. in my project, and I think they were so creative. Uh, I mean, they are they are just like artists, and that's why in the uh, uh, Taipei Biennial 2018, I invited many um, um, uh, um, environmental group be part of the Biennial. And I think on the one hand, because what they were doing were very creative and also very active. And at the same time, they always know, or they, they always engage in the public into their projects. Mm. Well, you know, usually in the art, in the art scene, art world, artists work just uh, by themselves or for themselves. They don't know how to communicate with other people. And that's why I always like to mingle those people together. And for me, I wouldn't make difference between the both. Certainly the way they make the living and their skills are different but they are the same. I mean, they are same creative and, and also sometimes more active in the society than the artist. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, as you see that in Plum Tree Creek project, uh, I try to have the, not only the community, but also the government to be involved in the project. And also Bamboo Curtain Studio, as an, as an organization for artists in residency, um, later on, it, it, it changed their purpose and, and also their, their vision later on after, Bamboo, after this Plum Tree Creek project. And with the same idea, I would say, uh, this, this was how I did uh, in 2018 with Taipei Biennial. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say museum as an ecosystem, because I think museum as an institution can play also a very active role, uh, especially in the environmental issue. That's a, a really good connection to our next question, actually, because somebody's commenting and they said that they loved Post Nature, um, the, the exhibition. Uh, they had the opportunity to go in person, which is uh, great to hear. Uh, the work in Dantre, of course, around Plum Tree Creek, they describe as very um, process uh, or community-based. Um, and so they're asking about museum, the museum's role as a part of this work at Plum Tree Creek. And in particular, the exhibition at the, that you mentioned as a kind of final report uh, was an exhibition of documentation. So do you see that as a complete representation of the project in some way? Um, and another question, what is your opinion on the museum and the museum's collection or archival role when it comes to process-based, community-based or temporary ephemeral works? You've just um, commented on you know, the museum's role in terms of environmental engagement, but um, this is more from the perspective of uh, 
collecting, archiving, documenting the sort of projects that you're talking about? Um, actually, I think, um, yeah, I am not so much like a uh, traditional artist, and especially for this kind of socially engaged arts, what to document or you know, what to present is also a very critical uh, issue. So for example, um, uh, we, we have a lot of opportunities to present Palm Tree Creek project. And each time we, 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 we do it in different way mm -hmm. and we choose different material to, to present. And uh, better it will be um, 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 in, uh, how to say that, not just presenting the archive, but we usually would like to initiate um, something um, with the, the, the different uh, in, uh, institutions. Mm. So, so it's, it's not just for display, but really um, I would say it's a, a kind of pedagogical <laughs> uh, projects in some way, yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned pedagogy because my I was going to jump in with another question where here we've had an, a couple of questions now about the museum, of course, and the museum's role. But it seems to me that um, the you know, university or nearby schools have also been involved in the project in different ways, uh, sometimes directly by yourself or by others, you know, local teachers or other artists. Could you comment a little bit on that relationship? Um, because it seems that there's an important sort of connection there. Yeah, uh, for the environmental subject, I, I think uh, if you work in a very traditional way, like the artist just work by him or herself, then how could you uh, broaden the issue to the general public? And that's why I think, um, especially for the environmental art project, it's very important to um, have the people be engaged mm. or uh, I mean to invite them to understand what you meant to and and that's why uh, at the very beginning uh, we were thinking to um, to work with the schools and the community together because uh, we know the reason why for example, why the creek has been ignored. It, it was because we learned a lot of uh, e the, uh, the ecology idea or uh, how the environment should be, but we never really facing the reality of what happened in our neighborhood, etc. So mm -hmm. I think we, we just uh, bring the students into the real world instead of uh, sitting in the classroom and try to discuss what happened to the to the world and and then develop ideas out of it mm -hmm. i think it's more active and more um uh how to say it, more, i i some, somehow i found it's more interesting and more alive somehow uh, wow. for teaching and learning yeah mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take another question here um, from Sophie, who I know you know, um, who says hello. Uh, you've been Hi. creating socially engaged art since the early 2000s in different communities across Taiwan, uh, while also exhibiting and curating in a museum context. And um, today you've, you've talked about a very seminal project, but for those unfamiliar, um, you have many others as well. Um, can you elaborate on your experiences straddling these different worlds? Uh, and there's also a comment um, that Margaret uh, Chutan, who of course was heading Bamboo Curtain Studio, mm. is, is sadly missed. Mm. Um, so perhaps could you elaborate on your experiences moving between these different roles? Um, uh, I would say that uh, because I have my art education in Germany, it's not in Taiwan. So um, my idea of art, uh, it's not, um, not so uh, academic 
academic uh, like you know i mean the students used to have um and 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 I was very much influenced by the conceptual art and, and art interventions. Mm. Um, I mean, um, the, those, those way of making art was uh, my, somehow my interest. And so what, what I would say is um, um, no matter where I am actually, uh, I always try to understand uh, the where I am with whom I work together and try to understand the context and develop um, idea out of it. Mm -hmm. and, and so I can mention that uh, uh, recently I work also with uh, the Thailand, Thailand um, uh, how to say that? Uh, it's a uh, uh, life like living art, uh, living art uh, center, and uh, we try to also uh, to <clears throat> to make research on those kind of socially engaged art project in Taiwan and try to encourage more artists working this way. I mean, um, uh, I mean, I, I think the, the uh, when we understand art, um, I mean, art has uh, many different uh, meaning or different functions. And it's not only uh, for displaying in the museum, but also it can really play an active, active role in our daily life. And I would say this this is really what I am very interested in. Yeah. Mm. How to make art as in verb, not as a norm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I wanted to ask, um, we've got a little bit more time, uh, and that's exactly the, the sort of object of my question is time. So I noticed that in, in your projects uh, and not only the one that you introduced today, um, it's often seems to be proposing a different relationship to time and place, getting people to sort of slow down and pay attention to the context around them. You mentioned that many people um, are new residents to the area that your project um, was taking place in. Uh, and I think that's a common situation in many urban settings uh, that people don't know a lot about the place where they live or the people nearby. Um, and I wonder if that's something which has been um, conscious. Is it coming up in your conversations with collaborators, for example? Because that also seems you've mentioned industrialization, capitalism. So I'm interested in that relationship between capitalism and time, for example, modernity and time. And, and if that's something which environmental art also you know, does something different with. Um, yeah. Uh... Actually, in the 80s and also 90s, most of my projects were focusing on social political issue. And also, as I mentioned, that um, cultural identity was always the big issue in, in, in the art world or culture scene in Taiwan. And, and and I, I think if you are really care about the, uh, the so-called cultural identities, you got to ask yourself um, uh, what, kind of, what kind of culture you are living in or what kind of uh, value or cultural value or, or your know, value of the life uh, you would like to, uh, continue or pass it on to other people. Oh. And I think those are really very key issues in, 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 in the philosophy of my work. And, and so I, I have discussed, for example, uh, the gender issue in my work and also uh, the power relationship uh, in my oh. work. And, and then I think the, the more essential one 
uh, or the most important one will be the pow power relationship between human and non-human. I mean, the land uh, with the world, hmm. uh, yeah, as a whole. So, uh, so it means uh, although we always criticize pe uh, the government or or no matter who has the power. Uh, mm. But but we as a as a person, how we treat our nature, uh, our our neighbor, our, how we treat the land and the whole environment, actually is the same power play in some way. I would say so. I think the environmental issue goes much deeper to the whole relationship. Um, yeah, between the different spaces and etc. So mm. um, that's probably a really great place to uh, wrap up our conversation. I'd love to keep talking to you. Um, and we've had uh, a couple of other comments as well, and as well as just thanks for your um, great talk today. And I'm going to echo mm. those thanks and say once again, thank you. Thank thank you. Many thanks for joining us from Taipei. Um, thank you to our audience and our questions. Um, I look forward uh, to seeing uh, you all next year, um, joining us then, um, but um, I can please ask you to put your hands together virtually. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Many, many thanks again.